Hi and welcome. This is the first of two videos which support the Bottle Rocket Challenge student booklet. My name is Glenn from Splat 3D. Here are some suggested answers and information to help your students complete the mind map. Let's get started. It's important to understand three key areas for stable flight. One, center of mass and center of pressure. Two, symmetrical design. And three, strong fins. Imagine this stick has been tossed through the air and it's spinning around. Exactly where does it spin? Does it pivot at one end? Or the other? Or the middle? If you said it spins about the middle, you're right. That's because it's the center of the stick's mass. That's where it would balance. So we'll represent that using this pink dot. Imagine the center of mass like a pin that an object would spin around. Guessing the center of mass in this unusual shaped stick is a bit harder. Let me show you how we find it. Balance the stick on something and move it left and right until you find that sweet spot where it's just going to balance nicely. We're going to use the same method later with our rockets. The center of mass is sometimes called the center of gravity. We can use gravity to help find it. The center of mass isn't always in the middle. For instance, this rocket might have a lot of mass near the nose cone, in which case the center of mass could be closer to the front. In another case, we could have a very heavy fuel tank or oxidizer tank near the back, which would definitely move the center of mass. In space, a rocket would use thrusters pointing sideways to stabilize the flight. The next important thing to understand is center of pressure, not the sort of pressure that's inside a balloon, that's static pressure. As this branch falls towards the ground, can you guess will it fall straight down or will it rotate one way or the other? First step is finding the center of mass, like we did before. Find that sweet spot where it balances, and we'll mark that with the pink dot. Great. On this side, the surface area of the trunk is roughly that big in 2D. On the right hand side, the area of the crown of the tree looks to be about the area of A2. You don't need to calculate it, I'll show you an easy method in video 2. As the branch falls down, it pushes air out of the way, but the air also pushes back slightly, and this is called dynamic pressure. The more surface area, the bigger the dynamic pressure. Because there's more surface area on the right hand side, that's the way it'll spin as it falls. As a rocket moves upwards into the air, the dynamic pressure will be pushing back down. Let's say a gust of air, or for some reason, it spins a little bit. Will it continue to spin, or will it ride itself back up? It all depends on the center of pressure. The center of pressure is the point on the rocket where the area on one end is equal to the surface area on the other end. These big fins mean there's more surface area towards the bottom, so the center of pressure could be roughly around there. It's important to note that the center of pressure has to be below the center of mass, and that's what keeps a rocket stable. If the center of pressure is at the same spot as the center of mass, then things get crazy. The rocket will launch out of control and it can turn around and chase you. To avoid this, we can move the center of pressure downwards, and we do that by increasing the surface area of the fins, we make the fins bigger. The downside is that that will create more drag and perhaps more weight. The next bubble is number two, symmetrical design. Imagine a line of symmetry running up and down the rocket. This rocket is definitely not symmetrical. On the right hand side, the fin's much shorter. It'll have less drag and it won't fly straight. If the body of your rocket is not straight, it can cause trouble as well. Real rockets can point the nozzle in different directions to keep it stable and take off. It's called a gimbal. On a model rocket, we don't want this to happen. We don't want asymmetrical thrust or off to the side. We want it to be symmetrical or straight down for stable flight. The third bubble is strong fins. We need really strong fins that don't bend out of shape during the fast speeds of flight. If it does and the fins flop or bend, can see it's really going to cause lots of stability problems. 
Here's one of my very early rockets. I've lost count of how many roofs this one has crashed onto and survived just. There's the little struts that connect the fins and make them stronger. Ice cream lids work well. It's a polymer called polypropylene. Score a line, cut lots of little tabs, and then bend them alternating backwards and forwards. Polypropylene doesn't accept glue very well, but it can be held in place with good old sticky tape. If you do want to try gluing, you'll need to use some wet or dry paper, this is 600 grade, to just take the gloss off the plastic, it roughens it up a little bit, gives the glue something to stick to. You'll need to do both plastic parts. Here I'm experimenting with different ways to join it. This one uses plain glue, no tabs. You can see that it can bend sideways. The one with tabs is much more sturdy. It's a lot stronger. Simply hot gluing on some cardboard fins works well unless you're using water bottle rockets, in which case you might need to paint them to waterproof them. These little attachment points are 3D printed. Once they're Tarzan gripped on, it's quite easy to pop the fins in and then to change the fin design if you like. Here's another 3D printed design. It makes it easy for students to evenly space out their three fins. It's a combination between poking it straight in like that and having tabs as well, which means it can be held on with sticky tape. This is an air bottle rocket. No water means that sticky tape is going to stay strong for several flights. The next key is keeping the weight down, low mass. A light rocket is a fast rocket. Let's start off with number one, nose ballast. But sometimes we will need to add weight. In this rocket, the center of mass is really close to the center of pressure, which you know means that it's going to be an unstable rocket. We can adjust where the center of mass is by adding some weight to the top. Now the center of mass moves closer up. And that distance means that it'll be more stable. Adding weight to the top will make your rocket more stable, but here's a sneaky way to save some of that weight. Increase the distance or the height of the rocket, and you can actually use less weight and it's just as effective. Use a lightweight structure to move the weight further up. If that cross is my center of mass, the further away from the center of mass, the more effective the weight is. If I double the distance, then I can halve the weight and have exactly the same effectiveness. And that's why on a short rocket like this, you'll need a fair bit of weight. I'm using some plasticine. Around about 19 or 20 grams will get you started, especially if it's a water bottle rocket. Here I've cut the end off another bottle because it's going to space the weight further forward for me, which means I can use less, but it's also a more aerodynamic shape. You could extend the body using a pool noodle. You can shape the front with scissors and if you need some weight, you can pop it inside there. I'm experimenting with a longer neck from a different bottle. It worked well, but on the downside, the longer the body, the harder it is to join it symmetrically to keep it in a straight line. Most bottles will nestle in together and remain symmetrical. On the downside, it adds more weight because the bottoms are quite heavy. This rocket body has been extended by cutting out the centre section of a second bottle. It's really lightweight and I've added a plastic nose cone. The next bubble, number two, is adhesives. Consider what adhesives you use on your rocket. Using too much hot glue can quickly add mass to your rocket, but also it has the potential to damage the bottle, not so much down near the neck where the plastic is really thick, White craft glue isn't recommended for gluing plastics. I found Tarzan's grip is an excellent choice because it doesn't dry to a brittle join. It stays flexible. But you must sand both plastic parts with a fine grade wet or dry. This special plastic glue has a primer. There's no need for sanding, but because it's a super glue, I wouldn't use it around children. If it's an air rocket, the good old sticky tape works well. Here's an experiment that I set up. I've used three different adhesives, gluing identical parts together, and found the super glue was too brittle. The hot glue held really well, but it relies on melting the bottle slightly. Best of all was the Tarzan's grip. Reducing the mass, and therefore weight of your rocket, also means thinking about what tapes you're choosing to use. This is silver duct tape. It's fairly stretchy, it's light, it's good for joining two bottles together. This is a cloth reinforced tape. It's very strong, tends to be heavy, but on the plus side, it'll stand a little bit of water. It's very sticky. 
The lightest and cheapest of all is cello or sticky tape. This roll is 18mm wide, good to keep it away from water, great for air rockets. Aerodynamics is the next key area. This can be the edge in making your rockets fly further and faster. Bubble 1 is the frontal area of the rocket. Here I'm sketching the shape of a fin as seen from the side view. From the top, I'll only be able to see the leading edge. So looking down from the top, I'll see the leading edge as a line. The smaller the frontal area, the easier your rocket will move through the air. Really thin fins might be too weak, so we can make a triangle out of the shape. We've barely increased the frontal area, just make sure that the air can still easily flow through the middle of the fin. What about if you needed a larger fin, but you don't want to increase the frontal area? Easy. As seen from the side, you just need to increase the area of the fin by going downwards. It's still the same frontal area, almost no extra drag. The next bubble is drag or air resistance due to the shapes that we use to design our rocket. Before launch, air is like particles. To a fast moving rocket, the air is like layers. We try to guide the air smoothly around the rocket. Unfortunately, if it goes into tumbling eddies, it slows the rocket down. This rounded front does a much better job of separating the layers and a better job at guiding the layers back together. The best shape of all is a teardrop shape. It's easy to separate the air, but you've got to um, guide it gently back together to avoid those eddy currents or the whirling air. Bubble three is spin stabilization, spinning the rocket about its long axis. This is an air rocket. A hole in the cap forms a nozzle. The massive rush of air out the nozzle causes a force in the forward direction called thrust. If the hole happened to be drilled at an angle, the thrust is no longer symmetrical, it's asymmetrical, and it could force the rocket off course. What if we angle the fin slightly so that the rocket rotates about its long axis? The thrust that was pointing up is now pointing down. So by spinning the rocket as it flies, we're evening out any lopsided or asymmetrical forces. Despite some wobbles, the general flight direction should be straight ahead. So how do we put a slight curve in this fin? Well, attach the back, then before you stick the front down, hold a ruler on the fin, and looking straight down, carefully line the fin up along the long axis. I'm going to place a mark so we can see that I'm curving it, just maybe three degrees, five degrees, that's the second mark. And on that second mark, I'll then tape it down. Angle each fin exactly the same. Check out this fin. It has an adjustable tab or control surface. As the airflow hits the control surface, it's deflected one way, which rotates the fin away from it, thus giving you rotation. The next key area is the operational requirements, the things to keep in mind when flying the rocket. Bubble number one is nose cone. If launching at an angle, the trajectory will look like a long arc with a little bounce at the end. It means that because it's a glancing blow, you can consider lightweight nose cones like this vacuum formed one. If you're going for distance, that little skip along at the end could be the extra meter you need to win. If you're flying anywhere near cars or people, then I wouldn't use a solid nose cone. I'd go for something soft and deformable like this pool noodle that's been shaped with some scissors, or this half of a handball that's quite spongy. For a really neat look, ask an adult to cut the neck off a bottle and then tape the ball over the top. It gives that really rounded nose cone look. The second bubble is fins. Flying near trees can be tricky. The leading edge of fin A is way more likely to get caught up in the tree. Fin B is a swept back design and it's much more likely to fall or slip through the tree. Much more important than an awesome rocket design is the safety of those people around you. Be guided by your teacher, but one rule is never put your head over the top of the rocket, even if you're sure that there's no pressure inside. Safety specs never go out of style for rocket engineers and scientists. Have fun flying rockets, and don't forget to tell your teacher that she or he is awesome.